and Lirilolo, and welcome to another Rangaroo cast with me, Rangaroo, and today we are doing a 3v3 on Paddy Field. So, on the blue four side, we have another 505, Blonde Field, the Zuri, and on the red four side, we have Tony, Joni, Mali, and Duro, SVK. So, on the map Paddy Field, I'll just explain it real fast, we have Hotel, which is usually a contested area, a lot of open ground, usually pretty ATGME area, and we have Mike through Delta, which are very close capture points, as you can see, and it's usually a big fight between Lima and Echo. And then you have India and Bravo, which both sides usually capture to their retrospective sides, and it's usually just a few towns and forests to hide in. So, let's get things going. And I believe this match was part of one of the gentleman battles, where basically it's, um, this one is USA versus Russia, road in conflict style. So we have Russia trying to invade the USA. So that will be that, and let's get things going. And slow down, don't hit the reverse button, keep doing that by accident. And a plane, we do have planes, we have a bunch of MiG M23s. MiG 23 MLs and MODs, can we fly now? And I don't know what we're going to try and accomplish with that. That's a lot of money spent on planes. I don't have a great ground force. And really need to try and kill some helicopters. If they want to make it worth their dos. Maybe I'll do a bit of a helicopter rush into India. And yeah, quite a big helicopter rush it seems so into Echo. And the MiG-23, so you're going to go in. Now as Huey's really packed up together, flying right over, they're going to be bombing out, and Red 4 going to be capturing this old town intersects, and MiG-23 is going after the intruder, kills it before he can drop the bombs, and then these MiGs are going after the train Huey's, that's oh, just like airline battery to see MiG spam stopping helicopter rushes, we have some Gorn Strackleys inside the town now, and it's one MI-24. Not really enough to hold off this assault go. You have heavy hogs all messing up here as Gorns. And Trini Huey's in a very hot LZ. Light riflemen coming out of the Huey's. And they are inside the town. It seems like Blue 4 are going to have a nice advantage onto Echo. Now on Bravo, it does seem like Red 4 are going to be the ones moving up. As Blue 4 just holding their side of the town with a bunch of javelins and infantry guys. Yeah, uh, he's playing a calendar attack. I know uh, Blue 4 can get a Canadian player. I'm not entirely sure what other player Red 4 can get. I think Red 4 is all Russia. Yeah, it seems so. And Red 4 are going to be moving up into Hotel. Bunch of BMPs, C-72s, all that good stuff. And Blue 4 going to be moving up into zone also with a bunch of air Hueys. <coughs> and the Hueys are flying over Delta. Got some BTRZ Ds with Igles inside them. I'm going to be shooting them down. They palm onto the forest and onto the town. And G Series are going to be flying down south to try and deal with this old assault here. Here is a Tunguska in the array, and that Tunguska will not greet him very nicely. And the Series <laughs> kind of going to your death. I'm holding out in the hotel and speed this up a little bit. Red 4 moving some forces into Delta. Neap on the AA. Yeah, those Ihawks may just. Oh, he does lose one Ihawk. 
Mid 23 MLs coming in, finishing the other guys off. Euro's moving up, but the light rifleman with a dragon launches. A pick him off, easy peasy like. Mac 38 dropping naked on the infantry. Now Bradley in a very nice position to spot anything that does come around over here. K29 at the top flank. Keeping it nice and secure. And those more so could be hot ears. Or Russ Marines. It's on the edge of that forest. Uh, it sounds pretty well defense with uh, Moors and Highlanders. Well, Blue 4 infantry moving up into Bravo. They just foot soaked out, didn't they? And yeah, they won't rank out too well for um, those Russ Marines pretty nasty. But they did spot CV in the AO. So that might get blown up to Smith Range in just a wee bit. Wild Regals coming up. Uh, that's using that to kill the Yak. Oh, I hit backwards. I meant to hit bloody slow down. Uh, why did I have to put that yeah, right here yeah, instead of right here? I'm too used to pressing this button when it's right next to the bleeding pause button. But anyway, we've got the Wild Regals again going after Yak Yak. And... Is he going to get it? Oh, he's not going to get it. 1 HP, the luckiest yak alive. Okay, 29's for the last row of infantry guards. Use like rifling are the only things left to really defend Echo. And they're just getting annihilated by his KAs. Absolutely annihilated. Well, I like all a free sign them being brought out. Very expensive and very vulnerable units. Wouldn't really want to have them all together. Red 4 moving a little bit out of the hotel. Just trying to capture this tree line here. Very advantageous tree line as it gives you access to this old town which you can then move up into Lima or Michael. Heck, even in for November if you're feeling quite lucky. So very advantageous, very advantageous area to hold. Here's the more Silkers doing a bit of a gunfight between Pathfinders, which are Pathfinder just hasn't actually spotted him, so they're going to be falling back just a wee bit. No, they're going to stay. They're going to stay. They're going to stay and fight. Uh, now, they're just skirmishing back and forth and not really sure what they want to do. Now, they could actually put a CV like, right here and just neutralise a point. Try to bring in some extra Moolah points because they need to catch up to Blue 4, who are currently in the lead. Ihawks have been spotted. I think that's not going to go too well for him. And bonds of infantry inside Lima Forest. Now still out the have control over Echo. Red 4 has not really moved up. That more focus is getting up town area. And more infantry being brought in. On load, and that will be. Come on, on load, again killed by bloody T72. Yeah, right from an. Spetsnaz moving through the forest, and they're going to spot the Stingers, and the Stingers aren't going to get napalmed the crap out of, and they're going to let go. Most directly in the town, there's a bunch of riflemen that haven't even unloaded from their, <laughs> unloaded from their truck. And one three is dealing with Spetsnaz, those are hawks shooting down any plane that do come over. We do have an F 15A Eagle just flying over. Spetsnaz versus the M113. And the M113 is actually doing a really bloody good job. Spetsnaz don't really have any anti tank weapons. That's why these guys could do quite a bit of damage. A little bit of an assault here from Red Fork going through a sort of valley with a bunch of infantry guys and those ASUs which are now currently deceased. And my falls. Oh, nice open ground. And my fours love killing infantry, nice open ground with a crap ton of rockets underneath their rings. 
There's an overload of rockets. Now we do have a Canadian gunship in the area now. Very interesting helicopter, because it has these um, launchers on the side of them, but those launchers actually do a little bit of AP damage. They don't actually do high explosive damage. So yeah, see, yeah, that's the anti-tank helicopters in the most bizarre way. As you can just keep constantly bombarding heavy tanks or light tanks, you will eventually kill them with that gunship. Went for just bringing more stuff into Bravo. It's holding on to his forest here. Yeah, just pretty passive up top. Well, Conquer's a nice, just the AT German fin does come across the river. Yeah, the monstrosity has moved up a little bit. They could take a few pot shots at the Abrams. Ten more stuff here on day to nine. <laughs> Tell them to move up into the forest and try to hold your area. Or they will deny them. Deny them the point of that sector. Good thing they spotted you. And I love people who do use markers, using the custom markers. As it's a great way to communicate with your team. And yeah, preparing for push. Yeah, they do have quite a bit of forces there. Some M1 on P's and M1A run. Got a bunch of, uh, there was some tuners, yeah. Yeah, some tuners. TUAs. These UGM guys. May see a bit of action over here soon, but for now we have to see some blue fall guys, some Canadian airborne, things have gone strictly in this little crossroad section here. And they're gonna control that area. Patterns being brought out. Yeah, bunch more reinforcements, C-72 BLA, so a lot, of, a lot of heavy armor here from Redfall. Some T-62s, BMP-3, C-72As, a lot of three T-72 BIs. Lead now. And just both sides preparing up. So there's going to be a class quite soon. Red Force slowly just catching up. So Blue Force are going to be the ones who need to attack. And that, <laughs> that MiG just flying right over the ADATS. And the ADATS can't shoot it down. Oh, it does eventually, does get shot down. Was he trying to say use this road to tanks? Yes, yep. And is this in a move? Some movement? Yeah, we've got some infantry getting into the town. Uh, yeah, most directly gonna be firing on Ponyam. Yeah, unload, unload, unload. Please unload, Blue Fall. Please unload. Press the F button. Press the unload button, please. You're gonna get killed. Oh, they keep forgetting to unload the infantry. Too bad there's no option that when you spawn your units, and let's say you don't interact with them whatsoever, and they get to the area that you told them to spawn to, they will automatically unload. That'd be a great feature. Just a little bit of quality of life. And now Strums has picked up the Humvees. Oh. New com. Yeah, both sides have been really bloody passive. Let's turn this up to times four now. Hyperspeed. We'll get some Chimeras coming out. That's a great advantage of having a Canadian player. You've got those Chimeras. 100 point, 20 armored, 1980 tanks of destruction. So now it's probably my favourite vehicle, it's favourite tank to use really. And it comes under the vehicle section, which is crazy. It's most it's the most heavily armoured thing that Canadians get. It's the most tankiest thing that Canadians get, to be honest. But yeah, most nations get. And then it's flying over, and now they're getting killed. Someone gonna be bleeding push? It's NATO, they need the points as Red 4 has actually catched up and overlapped them. Well, for battle time remaining. K 
kill with that strum. Right, so that's his no strum here. Defense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they have so much stuff here. They could make a break for it. A lot of them run on P's, then when A runs. Do have some Light Hawks and Sharp Rails and Adach. Or oh, over on Pack size, it's, it's a pretty nasty line. It's a lot of ATGMs, which is. Light Rates, yeah. A lot of ATGMs. But they just need to make a push somewhere and they do. Some artillery, some known as firing. Chimera moving up. But it's time to times two. Yeah, it's going to be back it out with his T55, scaring them off with Bastion ATGMs. Oh, ooh, a bit of a helicopter stuff. A lot of helicopter stuff here. Some recon cobras, a few Seahawks. And a no H for good measure. Good measure. Redford is a really nice defensive line. Cutting through the entire map. My eight's flying over to Lima, and they're looking at shot down. Don't know what he's trying to do here. Like, is he just trying to fly him over here, but he keeps forgetting that they come in helicopters and spawn all the way up here? No, I'll tell you, it's all same for his hinds. These hinds are going to get killed. We got some BTRDs going into the forest show. Slow sound a wee bit. And it's only 11 minutes left. Red 4 gaining so many points. But they, Blue 4 needs to move now or never. Because they're, they're, they're racing time. And they have all these forces here. It's enough to move up. It's enough to move up. But they're, they're just shooting back. Eight minutes left. Oh, they're gonna let this slide, aren't they? No, it was even just moving into the handling. Mean, I guess this is what their fear. All these ATGMs in this open terrain. But if they can just smoke this area to smoke all the ATGMs, then they can move out quite easily. Without the worry of being shot at when they get in close range, and NATO tanks are absolutely excellent at close range. Oof. I think he's trying to move them up here, but they spawn through here, drive around to his bend, and when they get to his bend, it's ATGM hell. And the Red Bull gaining a plus four advantage at the moment, actually. I think I'm going to get the mic CV somehow. Huh. Yours moving. Oh, this is where it's going to get a bit laggy. It's going to do the delay every 30 seconds because I didn't get this far. Yep. And looking at the time, that's actually going to be a good game for Redfall. I think Bluefall's just going to crit. Or. Yeah, that's going to be um, critting because that's a guy leaving. So, yeah, pretty good match for <laughs> Redfall. NATO did a great helicopter rush. From here all the way in Draco, and the amount of getting here with light riflemen. Light riflemen are great because they could ATGM anything that does come out through Delta, but they played Ray, Ray too passively in RPG. In India, they kind of just say they could have maybe moved up a bit, tried to at least hold the ears apart into the forest because those Russian Marines really are, and especially down here, just look at all of your stuff. Yes, amount of Cobras, it makes. The bloody American Marines jealous. All the Abrams, all the AA had a great force. They could have moved in and took the point. 
but they did not, and he was played very, very passively. Now, that's what really killed him, to be honest. Redfall did a good job coming back and just holding the ground with crap ton of tanks and ATGMs. Really playing a good old Redfall rave. Big open ground, because that's what Redfall loves. They love big open ground areas, allows them to make most out of their ATGMs and their long range tanks. So, this has been another Rangu cast. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.